Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bride by Mistake, starring Lorraine Day, John Hodiak, and Marcia Hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and a happier New Year to all of you. I hesitate to go further and wish you a prosperous New Year because of what happens to a certain lady you're about to meet. Her name is Nora Hunter, and she's very prosperous indeed. But far from bringing her happiness, her wealth is the cause of many startling complications in tonight's play, RKO's new comedy hit, Bride by Mistake, which stars as Nora Hunter, the lovely Lorraine Day who will soon be seen in the metro golden Mayor picture, Keep Your Powder Dry. Also from the original cast of Bride by Mistake is Marsha Hunt. And we're fortunate in having with us John Hodiak, whom you may have seen in MGM's Marriage is a Private Affair. Together, they bring us the whirlwind adventures of a woman eager for marriage who finds that wealth is more often a handicap than an advantage. I think you'll agree that how she overcomes that handicap makes one of the screen's most entertaining comedies. Whether or not you believe that money is the root of all evil, it is certainly true that the value of any currency depends on the laws of supply and demand. From all reports, there seems to be a new kind of currency in use around the world. It isn't paper and it isn't coin. Can you guess what it is? You're right, it's soap. Lux toilet soap. In France, we are told that a cake of Lux toilet soap is worth the price of a beefsteak dinner. In North Africa, two cakes purchased a lovely handmade wallet from an Arab merchant. And to make the women in our audience envious, a USO hostess in Paris reports that by producing a cake of Lux toilet soap in a perfume shop, she came out with a bottle of Chanel No. 5. So it seems that uh, you're not only lovely looking when you travel with Lux toilet soap, but you're rich as well. Now, to another story of women and riches, as we bring you the first act of RKO's Bride by Mistake, starring Lorraine Day as Nora, John Hodiak as Tony, and Marsha Hunt as Sylvia. <laughs> On an exclusive strip of the California coast, stands one of the rest homes and redistribution centers of the Army Air Force. It's even more comfortable than most because it originally housed the glamorous and fabulously wealthy Nora Hunter, heiress to the Hunter shipyard fortune. As a patriotic gesture, Miss Hunter, for the duration, has moved to another smaller house with only two swimming pools, a house in a secluded part of her estate, while the spacious Hunter mansion is providing rest and recreation to officers returned from active duty. Among them is Captain Tony Travis, who is spending his first day in the solarium in sweet repose. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, you. Yes? Uh, what do they call you, hostesses? Well, they call me Harris. Oh, well, look, Harris, what's the idea of passing me with that tray? Well, I thought you were asleep. I was, but there's something about food that wakes me up. Uh, what is it this time? Cream puff. Again? Mm-hmm. How often do you serve those things? Every hour on the hour. I'll say. I'm beginning to look like a cream puff. <laughs> Don't mind Lieutenant Corey. He's not used to gracious living. I'll, uh, I'll try a second one of those. Mm-hmm. It's your fifth, but who's counting? Say, uh, Corey, seriously, does this go on all the time? Nah. Sometimes they make you get up and play tennis or go swimming. And on Saturday night, a bunch of girls come over, and you have to dance with them. Oh, gee, that's tough. Yeah. And two weeks ago, someone brought a general around, and we all had a stand-up. No, a stand-up? On your feet? Yeah, but you get used to that kind of inconvenience. Sorry, time for your orange juice. Oh, Harris, I wish you'd let me alone. I'm getting sick with health. Oh, Corey, don't you like it here? No, nope, but don't be upset, Harris. I love it here. <laughs> just stick around a couple of weeks, Travis, and you'll feel just the way the rest of us do. Me? Never. This is the life for me. You like comfort? I certainly do. Say, Harris, do you think this would be too big a house for me when the war's over? 
Well, not if you close off 30 or 40 rooms. Well, it's not just the house I'm interested in. You see, when the war's over, I don't expect to ride in anything but my own plane. And I'll need a nice big front lawn to land it on. Oh. Yeah, how to get that big front lawn is my post-war problem. Simplest way would be to marry the girl that owns this one. Nora Hunter? Mm, she could give you the biggest front lawn in America. That's right. And put a fleet of P-38s on it if you wanted them. And all the cream puffs you could eat, wrapped up in $1,000 bills. Mm, that's an idea. I wonder what she looks like. I hear she's plenty easy on the eyes. Ever seen a picture? Picture? Don't you know? Why, she's the girl that's never been photographed. Never been photographed? You mean one of the richest girls in America never gets her picture in the paper? When you're that rich, you don't have to have your picture in the paper. You can pay to keep it out. I wonder what a girl like that does all day. Uh, what do you suppose she's doing now, for instance? Right now? Well, let's see. 3.45 p.m. She's launching a ship. Huh? Sure. As owner of the Hunter Shipyard, she breaks 100 bottles of champagne a year on boats. How do you know that's what she's doing? Well, here. Read all about it. Nora Hunter launches 100th vessel at the Hunter Shipyards. Think of it. She's smashing a bottle of Piper Heitzig on the prow of a destroyer while we're sitting here in thirst. And while I'm playing solitary billiards, she's smashing a bottle of Piper Heitzig on the brow of a destroyer. No, no, Nora, there's no use getting all worked but up. But, Jonathan, I'm tired of being cooped up this this constant protection while somebody else impersonates me in public. We have to take precautions, Nora. I am your guardian, and I'd never forgive myself if anything should happen. So while Nora Hunter's secretary launches ships and talks to admirals, the real Nora Hunter stays at home and chalks up billiard cues. Well, wealth is a big responsibility. Maybe I've been too cautious, but I don't think so. You've been a wonderful guardian, darling. It's, it's just that... Oh, I guess I envy Sylvia. Leading my life, having all the fun and excitement even getting married. You'll have a husband soon yourself. And after you marry Donald, you can lead a lot more normal life. Jonathan, do you realize I haven't seen him in eight weeks? Well, he's been in camp. Uh, wait a minute. Here come Sylvia and Philip. Hi. How did the launching go? Wonderfully, darling. That's the part of your life I like best. How did she act, Philip? Oh, she was fine. <laughs> it's so impressive to watch your wife knock a ship into the water with a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and the Secretary of the Navy hopes that I'll be happily married. He means you, of course, Nora. Well, it's nice to know that I have federal approval. Oh, has Donald phoned yet? Nope. Little late, isn't he? I guess so. Watch this. A five-cushion shot. Hmm. Hasn't seen you in eight weeks, and he's late. You ought to do something about that. What? Well, you might put on a different dress for one thing. If I hadn't seen my fiancé in eight weeks, I'd want her to be wearing something slinky with curves. A sarong, perhaps. Nora, while we're on the subject of marriage, yes, I'd like to give my notice. Sylvia, you notice? I want to go back to Washington with Philip. Oh, of course you do, dear, but... Well... I don't know what to say. I was afraid of this ever since you got married. When do you want to leave, darling? Phil has to be back in ten days. Oh, as soon as that? I'm going to miss you. But, darling, you're going to be married. You won't even want anyone else around. No, you'll see. You won't. Look, can't you wait until I'm married? Just until the wedding? Please, Philip. But, darling, you're so indefinite about the date. And I'm so definite about wanting my wife with me. All right. I'll get married right away. You fix everything, Jonathan. Fix everything? Fix what, young lady? This isn't a ship we're launching. You're oh, sure, married. sure. I know I have to be there myself. But you take care of all the details, won't you, darling? You'll see, Sylvia, I'll be married in no time. But Donald has something to say about this, and he's not even here yet. Come in. Donald! Well? Oh, darling, I didn't think you'd knock. I thought you'd break the door down. Hello, Donald. How are you, Don? Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> Philip? How are you? Fine. Aren't you going to kiss the bride? How are you, honey? Oh, I get it. This is no time for an audience. Come on, Phil. Don't think we aren't glad to see you, Donald, but an engaged couple has a right to privacy. We'll see you later. Well, Nora, here we are, just where we said goodbye eight weeks ago, back in the billiard room. Mm -hmm. And you were losing 21 to 16. Whose turn was it? Yours. Shoot. Oh, terrible. Well, I can't help it. There's something about this place. I'm a champ at the officers' club. Don, mm -hmm. I was thinking. Yes? This idea about being a June bride, it, it's a little old-fashioned. Mm-hmm. How about another month? You mean later? I mean earlier. Suits me fine. What made you say later? Nothing. I just thought you meant later. Well, I want Sylvia to be at the wedding, but she's going back to Washington soon with Philip. Oh, sure, of course. Um, Connors doesn't have to go someplace, too, does he? Jonathan? No. Does it bother you having all these people around, Donald? Oh, I'm sorry. I suppose I'll get used to it. Donald. Yes? 
I'm going to try a long shot. It, it's a pretty long shot, but I'll try it. Shoot. I think that you came here to say that you don't want to marry me. And you lost your nerve. Nice shot. You're right. I'm sorry, Nora. Oh, never mind. It's better now than Reno later. What happened, Don? I'm in love with someone else. Who? No one you know. Do you mind if, if I ask you one more question? No. Why did you fall out of love with me? Do you want it straight? Mm-hmm. Straight. Well, marrying you, Nora, well, it would be like marrying a corporation. I'm sure Connors would expect us to produce dividends instead of babies. I'm sorry, Nora. What it really comes down to is this. I just can't live with so much money. It's like living in a goldfish bowl. I see. Well, I, I guess I'll have to find some poor fish who can. I'm afraid so. It'll either be a guy who loves you so much he can take it or someone who loves your money so much he doesn't care. I'm neither one of those guys. How will I ever know which it is? I don't know. I don't know how you'll ever know. Well? Well, what do you say we finish the game some other time, huh? Sure. Goodbye, Nora. Oh, we've known each other long enough to stand a goodbye kiss? Sure. You're a swell girl, Nora. Goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye. I hope you'll both be very happy. What was that? That was the eight ball in the corner window. Well, I can throw away on Sylvia's diamonds, trump the next three, and the last trick's yours. Yeah, nice going, Philip. Little slam. That gives you rubber. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I, I'm not playing very well tonight. Nonsense, Nora. We had the cards. What do you say to turning on the radio and dancing? Good. I have a dance with Nora. No, really, I... I think I'll go upstairs now. But it's only nine. I know, but I've got a headache. Nora, darling, don't worry about me. Good night, everybody. Jonathan, we've got to do something for her. Yeah, I know we do, but what? We've got to take her mind off Donald. Find another man and quick. Well, that's fine, but how? See, there are more than a hundred men right now at the other house. All officers. Certainly some of them could amuse her, take her out, and make her forget. Uh, what do I do, go out and lasso one? It's simple. We'll give a party. A tea for all the officers at the other house. How do you know they'll come? Well, their commanding officer will see to that. Mm, it might work, Sylvia. But the mood that Nora's in, I doubt if she'd agree to it. Well, we'll keep it a secret till the time comes. Then it'll be too late to object. Okay. I'll call the colonel and arrange it. <laughs> Nora Hutter condescends to step down from her pedestal and entertain the Air Force. Well, how about a look, Travis? Ravishing, Lieutenant Corey. And don't accept her the first time she proposes. Make her ask you twice. Hmm. Say, you don't think I'm being unfaithful, do you? Unfaithful? Well, Janie's coming tomorrow. Do you think she'd mind my going to another girl's party the day before we get married? She won't mind the day before. What she'll mind is the day after. Oh. Besides, uh, did you ever go to a strictly social tea, me? I never even drank the stuff. And let me tell you what it's going to be like. You walk in, and there she is, radiantly lovely in something shiny and white. Uh -huh. She looks just like an iceberg. In fact, she is an iceberg. She says, charmed, and you say, charmed. She shoves a cup of tea in your right hand, the butler shoves a piece of cake in your left, the footman shoves a chair under you, and you're down. A beautiful crash landing. Well, this time, everybody's deliriously happy, and the joint is jumping. No, Corey, none of that for me. I'll stay here and relax. Captain Travis, your captain's waiting. Uh-oh. Come right in. What did you say? Travis, your taxi's waiting. A uh, taxi for me? Yes, the one you ordered to take you to Miss Hunter's. Oh, no. He's going to stay here and relax. Oh, 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 taxi. Uh, I ordered that for you, Corey. Uh, the estate's two miles long by a half mile wide, and uh, knowing your love of comfort, I took the precaution of ordering a taxi. Oh, yeah? We'll be right there, Travis. <laughs> Stop to come downstairs. The men are beginning to arrive. It's no use, Sylvia. You're sweet, and I know you did it for my sake, but, well, I can't go through with it. But they're the guests, and you're the hostess. Nora Hunter is the hostess, and they don't know Nora Hunter from Adam. I mean, Eve. Darling, you've taken my place so often, you can do it again. What is it, Nora? Are you frightened to go down there? Are you letting that break with Donald get you down so that you're scared to meet men? 
scared to give yourself a chance to fall in love again? Love? That's what I said. That's what I thought. And it's easy for you to talk about it, Sylvia. You've got it. But you can have it, too. No, no. I, I'd never even know if someone loved me. Donald showed me that. All right. Let's rule out love. Let's call it entertainment. The man to talk to, to take you out. No, thanks. In the mood I'm in, I'd ruin everybody's fun. You go ahead. Nora, you say it's your money that's always stood between you and the men you've liked. If I go down and take your place at the party, will you do the same for me? How do you mean the same for you? I'll be Nora Hunter, as I've been so many times before, if you'll be my secretary, Sylvia Lockwood. But, darling, Why it's just... not? You've said that you don't want to meet men as yourself, as Nora Hunter. You don't want them looking at you as a curiosity or an investment. You want to be like any other girl, and I don't blame you. Well, here's your chance. But that's a pretty shabby trick. Why is it? 5,000 people saw Nora Hunter launch a ship the other day. And where was Nora Hunter? Here at home. But this is different. This is in my own home. I just... How is it different? All we have to do is warn the servant. Wait a minute. How will Philip feel about this? You're his wife, and... And if some of those officers get attentive to we'll you... We'll be off to Washington in ten days. Phil won't mind. Come on, Nora. You've always wanted to know how men would act toward you if you didn't have the hundred million. But supposing they don't look at me. You aren't scared to find out, are you? No. All right, it's a deal. You go on down, tell Jonathan and Philip and the servants, and present yourself as Nora Hunter. You'll be down now. Promise. I'll be down, Nora. <laughs> Good luck, Sylvia. <laughs> In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars will be back with Act Two of Bride by Mistake. Why, hello, it's Sally, looking very thoughtful, too. What's on your mind, Sally? New Year's, Mr. Kennedy, and resolutions. Now that the New Year is really underway, isn't this my golden opportunity? Opportunity for what, Sally? Well, now is the time most every girl decides she's going to take better care of her looks and really do something about regular beauty care. So I want to remind those girls... Of a certain beauty soap, Sally? Of course. But just what is the best way to tell girls everywhere that daily active lather facials work like a charm, that they really make skin lovelier, and that they're so easy and quick any girl who hasn't tried them ought to start right away? My, my, Sally. Don't let your enthusiasm run away with you. Let's take it point by point. You know, the what, why, and how of Hollywood beauty care. Uh, you mentioned active lather facials. Active lather facials with what? Why, Mr. Kennedy. With the soap that has active lather. Lux toilet soap, of course. The soap nine out of ten screen stars use. And Sally, you said these facials work like a charm. Really make skin lovelier. Naturally, women want to know why. Because, Mr. Kennedy, everyone who's compared the lather of Lux Toilet Soap with that of other soaps knows how extra rich and creamy it is. That wonderful active lather does a thorough job. Leaves the skin feeling so soft and smooth. Right, Sally. And now you ought to tell just how the Hollywood stars take their Lux Soap facials. You just cover your face generously with the creamy lather and work it in thoroughly. Rinse with warm water, splash with cold. Pat your face gently dry with a soft towel. That's all. <laughs> Easy, Mr. Kennedy, as I said before. <laughs> and this beauty care really works, as you also said, Sally. In recent tests of Lux Toilet Soap facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. When lovely screen stars trust their precious complexions to this gentle care, you know how good it must be. And now, Sally, let's suggest to our listeners everywhere what a fine resolution it is to get some Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Use it regularly. See how lovely, how appealing your skin can really be. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act Two of Bride by Mistake, starring Lorraine Day as Nora, John Hodiak as Tony, and Marsha Hunt as Sylvia. <laughs> tea time at the residence of Nora Hunter, and a score of army officers are crowded about their hostess in adoring admiration. Only the object of that admiration is not the real Nora Hunter. Nora and her secretary, Sylvia, have changed places so that Nora can mingle with the guests to see if men like her for herself and not for her millions. So far, however, the experiment has been a dismal failure. Nora stands neglected on the sidelines while Sylvia, posing as Miss Hunter, is the center of attraction. 
You flyers seem to have a language all your own. Girl hardly knows what to say to you. Well, Miss Hunter, the nicest thing a girl can say to a boy is Roger Wilco. Roger Wilco? What does that mean? That means yes. <laughs> Look at them, morning over my wife. Yes, Sylvia is certainly a great success, doesn't Nora? And I thought the idea of this party was to find a man for me. Excuse me. Yes? Now, that tomato's sitting on the couch with all the officers around her. I suppose that's Nora Hunter. That's no tomato. That's my wife. Uh, uh, yes, that's Nora Hunter. How do you ever get her alone? I don't, and it's driving me crazy. I can see it might. Uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant Wilson uh, is the name. Uh, Lieutenant Wilson. If your wife's in town, we wish she'd join us. Wife? I'm not married. Well, isn't that nice? I'd like you to meet someone. Uh, oh, Miss Lockwood, may I present Lieutenant Wilson? This is Miss Sylvia Lockwood. How do you do, Lieutenant Wilson? How do you do? Miss Lockwood is Miss Hunter's closest friend. Oh. Oh, uh, Philip, uh, have you seen the garden? Seen it? I expect to be married. Have you known Miss Hunter long, Miss Lockwood? All her life. You see, her mother and my father were very good friends. Nora Hunter, huh? Uh, how do you like California? Oh, I think it's beautiful. I love the warm days and the cool nights, and I don't even think you know what I'm talking about. It's just what I always say, especially when it comes to blondes. I wonder what she does with herself most of the time. In fact, I'm going to leave you, the whole bunch of you, and retire to a quiet little game of billiards. Yes, isn't it the truth, though? I wonder if she likes it. Spoil <laughs> uh, my shot. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was here. <laughs> Hey, sounds like you're catching cold. Well, I've just been exposed to a rather chilly experience. You play billiards? Twenty-five points? Sure, two dollars a point. Are you a general or something that you can afford to play for that? I'm not planning to lose. Oh, all right. You know what we're doing? Nearest one of this side of the table shoots first. And I use this funny old stick to hit the ball. Yes. <laughs> Do you do this for a living? I'll play you another. Double or nothing. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, you can put that funny old stick down. I'm not crazy. Well, uh, uh, how about a walk? I'd love to show you the ground. Fine. Uh, but we'll have to sneak out. Why? Nora Hunter. Nora Hunter? We were warned by the CO. No unseemly conduct, no wild times, no doing anything unless she starts it. I ought to tell you, I'm Miss Hunter's secretary. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I would have to shoot my mouth. Oh, off. no, no, that's all right. You're absolutely right. She is pretty sticky. I wouldn't say that. Well, do you know her? No. Well, I do, and I'm tired of it. I'm going to ask for a raise, and if I don't get it, I quit. We're going for that walk, and we're not going to sneak out. Suit me. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Nora. We were, we were going for a walk. Nora, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine. What's your name? Anthony Travis. Anthony Travis. Nora, may I present Captain Travis, Miss Nora Hunter. How do you do, Captain Travis? He's been dying to meet you. He's heard you're so much fun. Glad to know you, Miss Hunter. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Sylvia, you've got <laughs> Oh, no, it's nothing. Oh, you'd better get a sweater if you're going walking. Do I need one? Oh, I think it'd be a good idea. I'll keep Captain Travis company while you get one. All right, I'll only be a minute. <laughs> Where did he go? The captain. You mean the captain and my wife. Look, down the lawn. He's going off with him. He's going off with her. He's worse than the rest of them. Just grabbed her. Men. They ought to be deported, the whole lot of them. And I thought he was so nice. Yeah, good looking, too. What if Sylvia goes for him? Oh, I don't think Sylvia likes good looking men. No, maybe she does. Huh? <laughs> well, maybe she does and maybe she doesn't. Now, look, let, let's call this masquerade off now. Let's see if we go back to being what she is, my wife. It's too late. Everybody here would feel offended. Suppose that captain makes a pass at her. Pass? Once they cross the lawn and reach that willow grove, she'll probably be fighting for her life. Well, what can we do to stop them? I've got an idea. Turn on that lawn sprinkling system over there. This lawn is going to get the wettest watering it's ever had. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. That's my wife. If that's all right, turn it on and hurry. Sometimes you've got to sink the ship to drown the rats. Okay, here goes. Turn on the other one for Dale. Sorry. Here goes the other. Hey, hey, turn that thing off. Hurry up, turn it off. Come on, get everybody. The water's fine. Sorry to hang around after the party.
party's over. You better stay by this fire. You certainly got a soaking. So did you. And it serves you right. Why didn't you look what you were doing? Serves you right. Next time, Captain Favis, don't break bait. I'm sorry. I guess I owe you an apology. Oh, it's all right. I understand. She swept you off your feet. Straight on, two army men took out a third and carried you off. Well, where's she now, by the way? Upstairs, getting dehydrated. Is she all right? Just a little mildewed. You seem quite concerned about her. Well, I feel sort of responsible. Oh, worried about Philip, too. Philip? No, no. By the way, what's his interest in Nora? Nora? Well, Miss Hunter, he seems to be awfully anxious about her. Watches her like a house detective. Oh, he's just an... <laughs> an old friend of the family. Hey, that's getting worse. Maybe we ought to have a drink. Uh, medicinally, of course. I know just the thing to cure a cold. How do I go about getting service? That dictograph arrangement there. Push down the button that says P for pantry. D for den, calling P for pantry. D for den, calling P for pantry. Yes, sir. Have you any claret? Yes, sir. Juice of six lemons. Juice of six lemons. Cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon sticks. That is all. Roger. Huh? <laughs> you must have spiked that apparatus off a bomber. Now, the only other thing we need is a hot poker. Oh, this will do. I'll heat it in the fire. <clears throat> if you don't mind, I think I'll just take some aspirin. Well, if all you want to do is cure your cold, go ahead. I have something special in mind. Incidentally, you don't really think Miss Hunter's angry, do you? What do you care if she is? Well, I'm a guest of hers, and I feel guilty. Although I don't know why I should. I still don't understand what you were doing watering the lawn. Well, uh, uh, you know how hard it is to get help these days. It's quite a job you've got. Secretary, companion, gardener. You're overworked. I told you she's a stinker. Come in. Excuse me, miss, from the pantry. Oh, uh, put it right here. That'll be fine. Thank you, Robert. Yes, miss. Now, uh, watch me carefully. First the lemon. Now the cinnamon sticks. Now the claret. One quick matter, sir. And now the hot poker. We plunge the poker into the pitcher. And you have a preview of paradise. Uh, you have to drink the first one right down. The first one? Before I put my life in your hands, where did you get this recipe? My Uncle Joe. Well, here's to Uncle Joe. <gasps> You mean you're dead, Uncle Joe. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're right. You know what his last words were? Nope. Pour me another glass. Uh, now, this one is to you. Well, that's very sweet of you. To me. The second one seems to go down easier. So, bless you, you'd better have another. This one we drink to you. You know, you're a very nice boy. To me. That wasn't just an idle compliment. You're intelligent, good-looking, and you play a pretty good game of brilliance. By the way, you aren't married, are you? No. You see, I was right. You're really a very nice boy. I may get married someday. When the war's over, it'll be nice to have your own girl. Mm-hmm. Someone to talk to, like we're doing. Someone to rumble with. Somebody who doesn't mind a good scrap once in a while. Mm, sounds like a beautiful life. Now, if that girl should turn out to be somebody rich like Miss Nora Hunter, you think I'd be upset? No. I should say not. What sort of a heel would I be not to marry the girl I love just because she happens to have a couple of million dollars? But I'd have to love her. Love a couple of million dollars that hard? No, no, I'm not talking about her money. I'd have to love her. Love her, understand? No. All right, I'll show you. Turn your cheek. Now, I don't want a lifetime of this. No. Now, as you were. What I want is a lifetime. Oh. See what I mean? I most certainly do, Tony. What, Sylvia? I'm going to see a lot of you. You certainly are, baby. I'm going to invite you over all the time. Maybe you and Nora Hunter can get together. Me and Miss Hunter? Don't be ridiculous.
Tony, you're not only good-looking and intelligent and a pretty good billiards player, you're also a hypocrite. How? Well, didn't you say if it was honest to goodness up and down your spine, love, you'd marry her, even if she was the richest girl in the world? Absolutely. What kind of a I know, I know. Then don't back down now. Are we going to have another medicinal drink? Sure, you want to cure your cold, don't you? Tony, I'm drinking to your marrying Nora Hunter. Your cold is gone, and so is your mind, baby. Hello, hello, Washington. Yes, of course, I'm waiting. Washington, Washington, D.C. Quiet. Jonathan, stop shouting. Do you want Nora to hear Hello, this? hello, Army personnel. Jonathan Connor is calling. Now, I want to speak with General H. Pinkerton Fitzgerald. Yeah, this will take an hour. Hello, Pinky. How are you? Fine, fine. You got your scissor handy? I want you to cut some red tape for me. Find out all you can about Captain Anthony Travis, Army Air Corps. Thanks, I'll hold on. I don't care what General Pinky says. I think this guy's the one for Nora. Well, I hope so, too, but we've said that before. That golf player and then Donald. I've never said it before. All those others were ones you wanted. This is one she wants. But how do you know he isn't attracted just by her money? That's exactly why Nora and I have made a plan. What plan? You won't be angry, Philip? Well, how do I know? Tell me what the plan is first. Well, Nora, posing, of course, as me, her secretary has promised Tony that she'd get him married to me. What? She's going to throw you to that wolf? Yes. She wants to test him completely. Oh, that's great. Let him think I'm Nora Hunter. Let him go with me. Let him fall in love with me if he can. And if he does, then he isn't the one for Nora either. Uh, that won't work. She'll break her heart because the boy is bound to fall in love with you. No, he is, is he? And what am I supposed to do while my wife is being pawed by some other guy? Write my memoirs? You're supposed to try to understand, to try and help Nora. Understand. Shh. Yes, Pinky, go ahead. Six foot one, 180 pounds. Well, never mind that. I know what he looks like. Enlisted January 1st, 1942. 50 missions, nine fighters, two bombers, furloughed by command. What's going on? Who's Jonathan talking to? Shh, Nora. Jonathan's talking to Washington. About what? Philip. About Tony. I won't have it. Jonathan, who do you think you are asking those questions? The Army took him, didn't they? What about his record before he joined the uh, Army? This is perfectly ridiculous. Oh, it's, it's not as ridiculous as you think, young lady. Do you know that he was arrested once? So Don't, what? So what me? Might be serious. Uh, Pinky, what was he arrested for? Champagne, zoo, penguins, roller coaster, police, New Year's... Oh. Thanks, Pinky. Goodbye. Jonathan, that's an outrageous thing to do. Darling, it's a big war. And all kinds of people get mixed up in but it. But to ask the Army if one of their flyers, one of their best flyers, is good enough for me. I'm sorry, but I just have a blind spot when it comes to you. When an old bachelor has to take care of a girl from the time she's that big, I guess he gets to be an old fool. Oh, oh Jonathan, how am I going to argue with you? Don't. Tell him who you are and marry him. Fine. Oh, only there's just the small matter of his falling in love with me. Or have you taken care of that, too? No, that's your job, darling. Do you love him, Nora? I think so. Then please tell him who you are. I can't tell him. I have to know if he'd care for me without my money. I think she's right. I think that Jonathan's right. Oh, but right. don't you see, Philip, if he falls in love with me as Sylvia, I'll always be sure. Pardon me, there's a Captain Travis on the phone for Miss Sylvia. Thank you. No, 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 that's for me. I'll take it on this extension, Robert. Hello, Tony? Sylvia, how are you? How's the cold? <laughs> Fine. Not even a sniffle this morning. Good. Can you get away this afternoon? I think it can be arranged. Fine. Why don't you come over here to the main Hunter Castle? We're having a wedding. A wedding? Yes. One of the boys named Corey. His girl just got in. They're getting married. <laughs> I'd love it. Wonderful. 2 p.m. I'll send a passport. for <laughs> you. Oh, Tony. Shall I bring Nora Hunter? Nora Hunter? Say, do you think she'd come? That'd be wonderful. Yes, well, leave it to me. I'll fix everything. Bye-bye. Nora Hunter. He was so excited when I mentioned the name, you'd think I was bringing Cleopatra. Don't you see, Philip? We simply have to go through with this plan. Yes, but I... I know it's hard on all of you, but I've got to know where I stand with him. As me, a person, not as Nora Hunter. I've just got to know. <laughs> We 
pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars will be back with Act Three of Bride by Mistake. And now, here's a young lady making the first entry in her 1945 diary. Happy, happy New Year's Day. Oh, last night was wonderful. Jim and I danced almost every dance, and at 12 o'clock... Goodbye, 1944. Oh, happy New Year, Jenny. And to you, Jim. It's bound to be a good year for me, Jenny, now I've met you. Gosh, you're pretty. You're adorable. Well, Diary, I'm going to see him next time he's home on leave. And we'll write every day. And here's something else. It's every day in the new year for my Luxo Beauty Facials. They've done wonders for my complexion. My Jim says it's smooth as peaches. Pretty girls, adorable girls, girls with lovely Lux complexions, girls everywhere who depend on the Screen Stars Beauty Facials find they do work wonders for the skin. Recent tests proved it. Three out of four complexions improved in a short time with this gentle daily care. So it's a good sound New Year's resolution for any girl to make. Regular active lather facials with Lux Toilet Soap. Don't miss out on the loveliness that should be yours. Try this fine white soap that's Hollywood's complexion care. Let Lux Toilet Soap facials with their creamy caressing lather care for your precious complexion. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll have something very special for you in the way of a surprise. So be sure to join us at curtain call time. Now here's Act Three of Bride by Mistake, starring Lorraine Day as Nora, John Hodiak as Tony, and Marsha Hunt as Sylvia. At the rest home for army flyers on the Hunter estate, a soldier takes the bride. And now the ceremony's over, and... The reception is in progress. Among the guests are Nora Hunter and Sylvia, but Nora is still posing as her own secretary, and Sylvia still impersonates the heiress in the scheme to find out whether Captain Travis is in love with Nora or her fortune. Right now, she's in his arms, her cheek against his shoulder, but it isn't love, it's just a waltz. Kind of quiet, aren't you? Mm Mm-hmm, I was thinking. What about? Oh, nothing much. The wedding ceremony and how happy they both look, starting out for what will be their first home together, even if it is only for two weeks. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. Remember my saying that I might get married someday? Yes. I have a feeling that day may not be quite as far off as I thought. What makes you think so? The Army's planning to turn a lot of us into flight instructors, keep us here at home. And if that happens, I want someone around to console me. (laughs) Tony... You know, you've made quite an impression on Miss Hunter. On Nora? Don't be silly. She hardly looks at me. Oh, just the same. She likes you. How do you know? She told me. No kidding. Yes. She said you were attractive and intelligent. In fact, she said you were the kind of a man a lot of girls would go for. Gosh, I never thought with all her money. What? Oh, oh, nothing. What else she said? Just a little thing. Enough to make me feel that if... Well, if ever you went after her in earnest, you, you might get somewhere. Still on the same campaign, huh? Look, uh, why are you so anxious to palm me off on Nora? Well, I'd say she was a pretty good catch. How do you know I like her? Well, you do, don't you? Well, yes. But when it comes to marriage, that takes L.U.V. love. You've got to make up your mind sometime. Oh, did you know that you're invited to the beach house with us? Nora asked me to tell you. We're all going down this weekend. Will you come? Sure. Oh, wonderful. It's settled then. It'll be heavenly at the beach this time. they've been together sunbathing, swimming, sailing. And remember, that's my wife, Esquire. We agreed to give him every chance to fall in love with her. Uh, but I'm beginning to wonder if he is the man for you. Maybe this is all a mistake. Why? Well, every time you leave him alone, he moves in on Sylvia. Oh, he doesn't move in on her. She moves in on him, according to agreement. But what girl in her right mind would test a man's feeling for her by throwing another girl at him? All right, if you're so smart, tell me why he enjoys her company so much. Well, he's a young man in uniform, and she's a pretty girl. 
If he didn't enjoy her company, I'd send for a doctor. Then what do you want me to do? Get him alone sometime tonight. Soft music. And give him a chance. It's nice out here on the balcony, isn't it? With the moonlight. Beautiful flying weather, night like this. Do you miss flying? Yeah. Up in the air, I'm clear-headed. I know what I'm doing and why. I know where I'm going. Down here, I'm sort of... Up in the air, you might say. I don't know anything. I know how you feel. Tony, they say that if if, if you tell someone else your troubles, it, it helps straighten them out. It's all right. Go ahead. I'm listening. You're listening? Yeah. Well, well, Tony, there's a war going on, and, and that changes a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You don't know anyone who has a long engagement anymore, do you? As a matter of fact, I don't know anybody who gets engaged. That's right. They just fall in love and get married. That's all there's time for. If, if you love someone, you ought to walk right up to him and say, My name is Mary Smith, and I love you. And I ought to say, My name is Anthony Travis, and I love you. Yes. But to say that to Nora Hunter doesn't seem right. It doesn't? No, it scares the pants off me. Now, if it were you, I'd say, Sylvia, I love you. That feels right. Feels natural. Does it? Yes. And I feel right, too. When I'm with her, I feel as if I were two men. One guy was pushing the other, saying, Go ahead, it's good for you. Well, wouldn't it be good for you? Good? Why, sure, it would be great. It'd be wonderful, but... But what? How do I know she'd have me? Well, there's only one way to find out. Propose to her tonight. Tonight? So soon? It seems almost... Oh, oh excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt. You weren't interrupting. I was just about to go and dress for dinner. You'd better, dear. It's half past seven. I'll look after Tony. Thanks. See you all for cocktails. And Tony, don't forget. Tonight. Jonathan, careful with those pins. Oh, why don't you get a dress that doesn't need pins? Ouch! Jonathan, I think you're sticking me on purpose. Yeah, I should. From what you've told me, you certainly messed up that balcony episode. Now what do you plan to do? Well, I, I thought that after dinner tonight, the rest of us could play bridge. Leave them together in the study. That'll give him a chance to propose and she'll turn him down. And it'll be over. You won't want him. Not if he proposes to her, but... But what? Perhaps he won't propose to and her. Why shouldn't he? She's rich. At least he thinks she is. And she's pretty. And on top of all that, you've been egging him along. But if he loves somebody else, he won't propose to her. And... Do you think he loves you? I don't know. That's what I've got to find out. Don't forget, after dinner we play bridge and leave them in the study. Nora, stop shuffling those cards. It's your deal. Can't. Samuel isn't here yet. What's he doing? In the kitchen, getting something Tony ordered. Well, Samuel's supposed to be the handyman around here. Least he can do is play a hand of bridge. What are we playing for? A tenth? Oh, well, what do you say, Philip? What? A tenth of a cent? No, no, I'm not going to play for money. Not the way my mind is wandering. <laughs> now, listen to her. How would you feel if your wife were closeted with another man who had designs on marriage? What are they doing? I can't see from here. That's what's driving me crazy. I'm going to peek. <laughs> well? They're sitting in front of the fire. I built that fire myself because Sylvia felt a cold coming on. A cold? For a nickel, I'd go in there and put it out right in his face. What was that? She sneezed. Sneezed, huh? So what? She sneezed. When's this bridge game going to start? Where's Samuel? Oh, stop fretting, Jonathan. Here he is now. Oh, it's about time, Samuel. And what in heaven's name have you got there? Claret, cinnamon stick. And the juice of six lemons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come in. What do you want that for? He's going to introduce Sylvia to Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe? Where'd he come oh, from? Oh, skip it. Samuel, leave the door open. Leave it open. Seems to me like something funny's going on here. Never mind. Deal, Samuel. Why, you're all the... He closed the door. Well, what do you expect? Whose deal is it? Mine. Oh, uh, I think it should be my deal. For heaven's sake, Samuel, don't be so absent-minded. Steal him, Nora. What's that? Sounds like steam. A hissing noise. They call that a preview of paradise. Preview of paradise? I don't get it. 
Nora, there's still time to stop this nonsense. Jonathan, if I told him now, he'd, he'd be so humiliated he'd never speak to me again. Did you say something, Samuel? I was about to bid. Three clubs. It's not your bid. It's Jonathan's. You dealt. Huh? One club. One club. I just said one club. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Two clubs. Philip? Two clubs. I just said two clubs. Oh, oh, did you? Pardon me. Um, three clubs. <laughs> Samuel, don't be so nervous. Go ahead and bid. Pardon me. Would you mind reviewing the bidding? Oh, all right. Pass. 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 Go ahead, Samuel. For heaven's sake, say something. Uh. Second rubber, we 1100 day zero. Nora, please go in there. He's not going to ask her, Jonathan. I know he's not going to ask her. He's been in there an hour and 15 minutes not asking her. Is that what you're going to make yourself believe? Well, if you're not going in there, I am. I can't stand it any longer. Hey, you all, what do you think's happened? What? Congratulate me, everybody. Congratulate me. Sylvia, Jonathan, I proposed and I've been accepted. You've what? That's right. I don't wonder you're surprised. I've been accepted. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. Didn't think I had a chance in a million. How about drinking a toast to the bride and bridegroom, folks? Uh, I'm sorry, Tony. I'm afraid I'm awfully tired. You'll, you'll have to excuse me. Well, what's the matter with Sylvia? She isn't feeling very well. Oh, too bad. Well, you'll both join me in a drink, won't you? Well, it's a little late for me, I... I think I'll turn in. Uh, good night. Uh, Philip, I, uh, I suppose this has been kind of a surprise to you. There's no one I'd rather have lost her to than you, old man. <laughs> good night. Well, where is everybody? Isn't anybody going to say congratulations? They all got tired all of a sudden. Oh, too bad. Just when I've learned I'm going to be a bride. The chair bumped into me. You look a little tired yourself, young lady. I'd better see that you get to bed. Upstairs with you. Mm-hmm. You know, I still can't believe it. Neither can I. I proposed, and you accepted. I did, didn't I? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Boy, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, who was that relative of yours? Who, Uncle Joe? Mm-hmm. I like him. Oh, here we are. Good night, Tony. Good night, darling. Sleep tight. Oh, hi there, Samuel. Thought you'd gone to bed, too. I just came in to tidy up a bit. Well, how's for joining me in a drink? Thanks. I need one. Good. Didn't know you were drinking, man. I wasn't until tonight. Oh, not feeling well? There's something funny going on around here. There. A house for drinking to my marriage to Miss Nora. Huh? What's that? Looks like Mr. Phillips. Where's he going? Search me. Well, that's Nora's room. Hey, he's kissing her goodnight. Mmm. <laughs> Taking his time about it, too. Something funny is going on around here. Honestly, Nora, I didn't mean to say yes But that recipe of his Oh, my head's been aching ever since five o'clock this morning That Uncle Joe special? I don't remember which relative, but he certainly had a happy life Nora, give him a day or two And if he's half the man that Pinky said he was, he'll back out I'm sure he will, Nora He never once said he loved me No, so far as I'm concerned, it's all over He shouldn't have proposed to you we're going back to the house right after breakfast. You'll have to keep pretending to be me until then, and then he can find out. Come in. Good morning. I'm glad you're all together. I want you to hear this. Look, Nora, we aren't getting married. We're not... Why? What happened? Your house guests, they walk in their sleep. And one of them happened to walk up to your door last night. I saw him kiss you, and it wasn't a congratulations kiss either. Wait! That's no reason to break your engagement. I'm very funny. I always break my engagements for that reason. I'll call you at the house, Sylvia. Don't go. I, I, I don't make a habit of telling people, but Nora and I changed rooms last night. And if you saw anybody being kissed, it was I. And now you might apologize to your fiancé. Oh, I'm sorry. Nora, 
I haven't even pity for you. I tried to understand when you wanted him to choose you in preference to whom he thought was Nora Hunter, but to give him another obstacle to overcome... I had to do it. I had to. In heaven's name, why? He'd still come to me as second choice. Well, you needn't fear now. Jonathan, Nora, darling, I understand your feelings, but we still have to go through breakfast with him. Come on, let's go down and get it over with. Good morning, Samuel. Samuel? Good morning. I got cereal, pancakes, eggs, bacon. Just coffee. Black. The same. By the way, Tony, we're leaving after breakfast. Thanks. Oh, a life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling sea. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, that's the life for me. Good morning, good morning, everybody. And how are the lovely young ladies this morning? Did you rest well, Sylvia? Yes, I did, Philip. Thank you. And now, uh, you don't mind, Tony, if I uh, kiss your fiancé good morning. You're not married yet, you know. <sighs> oh, boy, have I an appetite. What a day. Great. Glorious. Oh, there you are, Samuel. I'll, uh, I'll have eggs, bacon, pancakes, more eggs. Oh, I feel so good, I don't know if I can sit still to eat it. Oh, a life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling sea. Just a minute, uh, sailor. You're going to hit the deck. <laughs> you, Sylvia, get your coat. You're getting out of here. Huh? I don't know why I think you're worth saving any more than the rest of these people, but I do. Now get out of this house. I will not. Don't argue with me. There's no telling who I might hit next. If you've one shred of decency, I'll find it if I have to beat it into you. Now get up. Get out of that chair. Don't you talk to me like that. Don't you touch me. Let go of me. Put me down. Jonathan, stop him. Somebody save me. Samuel, let them let alone. Me Jonathan, save me. Oh. I thought something funny was going on around here. Two, six lemons, cinnamon sticks, and claret. All here. Now the poker in the fire. Tony. What is it, Sylvia, darling? Do you really love me? No, no, I just married you because I thought you'd be a good influence on our children. No, no, this is serious. Do you really love me? More than you know. Mmm, -hmm. smells good. And you remember saying that, uh, that you'd be a heel not to marry the girl you love just because she happens to have a couple of million dollars? Oh, sure, sure, that was while I was introducing you to Uncle Joe. And you still mean it? Sure, I mean it. But you can't push me off on Nora now. I've got you. Just the same, you'd better take a good look at our marriage license. Well, you're not going to tell me now that it's not legal. Oh, it's legal, all right. Just read it. <laughs> What's the matter with you? It looks beautiful to me. It's the most beautiful. Oh. Tony, darling, say something. Nora Hunter. So that's who you are. It was a trick. I had to do it, Tony. Really? Where's that, that poker? Tony, you're not angry. You're not going Here to... Here it is, and it's good and hot. Oh, Tony, you're not going to do anything. Certainly I'm going to do something. Where's that picture of Claret? Ah. Ah. Preview of Paradise. The rain day, John Hodiak and Marsha Hunt come to the footlights for a well-deserved curtain call. You started the new year off for us with flying colors, all of you. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Marsha, I've just been reading the critics' reviews of your new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, Music for Millions. It looks as if you had a hit on your hands. Thank you. We hope so. You build me with two very talented young ladies, C.B. Mm, more than talented, John. Mm-hmm. Good looking, too. <laughs> of course. They're both Lux girls. <laughs> well, I certainly am a Lux girl, Mr. DeMille. And to any girl who wants to look attractive and romantic, I'd suggest Lux toilet soap. Yes, you know the saying. While there's Lux, there's hope. There's who? Hope. Well, don't look now, but I think you're right. There is hope. How do you do? How are you? Sorry to butt in this, I guess. How do you do? How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob. Better to get in at the last minute than never hope. Telling you girls that Lux Toilet Soap will give you a complexion that sends men into a delirium. Honestly, it's so good it must contain irium. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Lorraine? Oh, Bob, thank you. Thank you. But uh, uh, just what brings you to our stage tonight? Oh, I just wanted to sell you a book, C.B. I never left home. <laughs> you never left home to sell me a book? No. <laughs> Now, that's the title, I Never Left Home. The author, Bob Hope, the price... Uh, yeah, 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 but, but uh, surely, Bob, uh, you can afford to give me a copy. Huh? I'm with Paramount. I could get you into pictures. C.B., you're using my line. Look, I... 
I can't give you a book because the profits from the sale of this book go to the National War Fund. Oh, well, that's different. I, I've read your book, Bob, and I think it's great. In fact, we're dramatizing it on the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. I never left home next Monday night? Yes, with Francis Langford, Jerry Colonna, Tony Romano. Well, who are you getting to play the lead? Yes, that's what I was going to ask. You know, the part uh, of the comedian. <laughs> the comedian? Uh, me, Hope. Well, we, uh, we offered the part to Crosby, but he turned it down. Not big enough. Bing Crosby? No, his brother, Everett. <laughs> oh, the thin one. Well, you know, CB, I'm going to be free next Monday night. Yeah, yeah, I guess you are, Bob. Oh. <laughs> what I mean is available for employment if you get hired up for anything like that. Well, well I, I, I hate to see any actor out of work, Bob, so you're hired. Five bucks. <clears throat> Just a minute, and so, <laughs> our cast for next Monday night will be Bob Hope, the lovely singer Francis Langford, comedian Jerry Colonna, and guitar strumming Tony Romano in a dramatized version of Bob Hope's best-selling book, I Never Left Home. Really, Bob, I, I think it'll be a great show for our audience. So do I. I read the book and I thought it was a riot. We'll be hanging, <laughs> we'll be hanging on every line, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. And don't leave home next Monday night or you'll miss I Never Left Home. One New Year's Day, not very long ago, an American poetess wrote, I would rather walk with God through darkness than alone in light. She was looking ahead to the new year and seeing it as we do now, a year of trial and tribulation. Tonight, I can't wish you just a happy new year. There's too much pain in the world, too much suffering, too grim a task ahead of us. But I can wish you courage and hope and faith and abundance. With these in time, we can forge a new world in which freedom and human rights are guaranteed to every man and woman, and understanding will replace intolerance. Until that time, no one of us need despair if we can say, I would rather walk with God through darkness than alone in light. Now, our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, join me in wishing all of us a victorious 1945. And we invite you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Hope, Francis Langford, Jerry Colono, and Tony Romano in I Never Left Home. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is an important date for millions of American taxpayers. It's the final date when you must file income tax declarations for 1944 or revise, if necessary, declarations previously filed. If you haven't received the necessary forms by mail, get them from your local collector of internal revenue or from your post office or bank. Remember, January 15th is the final date for filing or amending declarations. Ride by Mistake was presented through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Tune in again next Monday night to hear I Never Left Home with Bob Hope, Francis Langford, Jerry Colonna, and Tony Romano. 24 points for butter, no points for spry. Let all-purpose spry shortening help solve your rationing problem, give you more delicious cakes, pies, and fried foods. Use spry instead of butter for white sauce and for vegetables, too. 24 points for butter, no points for spry. Tomorrow, ask your grocer for spry shortening. S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of I Never Left Home with Bob Hope, Francis Langford, Jerry Colonna, and Tony Romano. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>